Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy Michael of Long Long Honeymoon coming at you today with a much requested discussion topic, and that is how to set up a campsite. Now, if you're an experienced RV traveler, you already know this stuff most likely, but if you're a newcomer to RV travel, then hopefully this video will help speed up the whole process of setting up a campsite because the first time you do this, it will take a while. So without further ado, we're gonna tell you what we do when we arrive at a campsite. We're assuming that this is a full hookup campsite, okay? Mm -hmm. Step number one, locate the sewer connection in the ground on the campsite. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Voila. Okay. For most of us, the sewer hose is the shortest hose that we carry. The sewer hose is probably the most important of the three hookups, at least if you value those long, hot showers. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to make sure you get this right. I mean, and something you will quickly discover. The thing about RV parks, there's really no regularity or sense of uniformity from one park to the other. And uh, sometimes you have to really do some contortions to get everything to work. Sewer connection, water, power. So what's the problem? We want to get inside our camper. <laughs> We're going to have to roll back a few feet. Door won't open. Okay. Sometimes it's the front of the campsite, sometimes it's the back, sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it's underneath the camper. <laughs> so first of all, you gotta figure out where that sewer connection is, and then you will position your RV accordingly so that you know it will reach. And if you have any doubt, then I hate to say it, but you need to break out the old sewer hose and go ahead and attach it, make sure that it will reach. Because there's nothing worse than getting set up and realizing that you need like an extra foot to make that, that you know, connection reach. And then you got to hook up and redo everything all over again. Now, some people do carry extensions to their sewer hose, but we don't. We did for a while, but personally, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time fiddling around with sewer hose extensions. And we don't really have a place <laughs> so. to put the extra sewer hose extension without putting it in our rear drawer. And to me, that sort of contaminates everything in that drawer. So we would lose all that storage. Number two, level your rig. Now, I don't mean front to back because you'll do that once you unhitch, but I mean the side to side. You know, a lot of times if you're in a full hookup campground, the sites are pretty level, but you might be off just a smidge. And it's important to us to do this because our bed sits sideways in our rig. If your rig's gonna be a little bit unlevel, it's better to be unlevel uh, with your heads pointed up. Uh, Raised up higher than your feet. You don't, want, you don't want the opposite. You don't want your feet higher than your head. It's, I'm not naming names, but we may have done that before. <laughs> And that's where you learn a lesson. And so we always try to make sure that our heads are at least level with our feet or slightly elevated from our feet. Because <laughs> it's no fun to sleep with your feet way above your head. <laughs> okay. You want to make sure you get that done before you unhitch anything. Get out your Lynx levelers if you have a set of those. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is what we're talking about. Yeah. We've <laughs> had these things forever. And I guess you could say they've held up pretty well. We've had them for 10 years. They were uncovered for most of that. Yeah, they're pretty dirty. Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of National Park dirt there on these things. There is a lot of National Park dirt on there. Now, some people just carry blocks of wood, and you can certainly do that. But uh, the Lynx levelers are pretty are better nice. better because they lock into each other, so they're not going to slip and slide all over the place. So that's nice. And they're brightly colored, so you don't forget to get them when you drive away. And by the way, we will put a link to these things and to all the products we discuss in the YouTube description for this video. So mm -hmm. if you're sort of stocking up for the first time, you can click those links and check out these specific products. Yeah. But you can see these things stack together. So depending on how unlevel the site may be, you can add extra height to one side. Mm -hmm. I usually have Sean back up a little further than he needs to go and then pull forward onto the links because I feel like that's an easier way to do it. Um, it's a little more controlled than backing onto them. 
which of course sometimes you can't help but back onto them. But if if we have the option, pulling forward onto them is much easier. Mm. Next step. Wheel chocks. So this is your chance to put out your wheel chocks to keep your rig from potentially rolling somewhere. I don't think I've ever seen a rig roll anywhere, but maybe it's because everybody uses wheel chocks. <laughs> yeah, here's what we're talking about with wheel chocks. Now we also have some sort of scissor style wheel chocks that are really nice. That, that go between the tires and sort of put pressure on them. They were a gift from a, an air streaming friend in Utah. Yes. So thank you. Hi but, Dave. <laughs> uh, basic wheel chocks you know you can pick up these things just about anywhere we'll put a link to some in the description for this video you need you need at least a couple of wheel chocks probably more again i've never seen a trailer roll once it's been parked but i've heard of it happening yeah and there have been a couple of campsites that we've been at where i'm like okay yeah we need a wheel chuck because you know you're you're level but there's like a little slope down the back or a little slope down the front and you're a little nervous you know so. yeah if you're ever like parked someplace where your rig is on the edge of a cliff which well, we have done a few times yeah we have done that in malibu for <laughs> yeah. sure we were really uh, on you'll the edge of a better. cliff <laughs> you'll feel better if you have some wheel chuck yeah now you want to unhitch this is pretty simple straightforward you want to drop the foot of your jack which is possibly a power jack. In our case, it's a power jack. And you want to lift up the tongue a bit to take some of the tension off those chains on your stabilizer bars. Mm -hmm. That makes them very easy to remove. Mm -hmm. So you kind of start that jacking process. You remove some of that tension, take those stabilizer bars off, pop the pin out of the tongue latch and pop it up to unlock. To open the slide forward and pull up. Open latch and lift the tongue all the way off your hitch ball. And so obviously you want to unplug your umbilical cord, undo the safety chains, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Undo your emergency brake cable. So that the tow vehicle and trailer are completely separated. Mm -hmm. And I usually lean down and double check because you want to make sure uh, that the ball has good clearance underneath the tongue. Mm -hmm. And then you can pull your tow vehicle forward away from the trailer and sort of finish setting up the camp. Yeah, this is when you can level front to back, you know, adjust your power jack to, you know, whatever level it needs to be so that you'll be level front to back. When it comes to leveling your trailer, some people carry around fancy devices. There are actually apps you can get that have levels built into them. So in theory, you can use your phone to help you. We use the good old fashioned internal level meter, <laughs> two eyeballs. And we also actually step inside the trailer and walk back and forth and check it out. Mm -hmm. But we can pretty quickly ascertain whether or not we've gotten everything right. So number four, fold out your step and survey the area surrounding your step. So this seems like kind of a dumb you know, step to put in here, but it's actually very important because a lot of places you fold out your step and you'll realize that there's like a tree root under your step or there's like some big rock or something that you could step off your bottom step and step onto and like break your foot. So this is the first in all of my camping travels. I fell and injured my ankle stepping out of the Airstream. It's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty ugly. And uh, it's about 12.30 at night. We're going to have to go to the hospital to get it checked out. Yes. I broke my foot mm -hmm. stepping out of our Airstream. Christy did an incredible gymnastics maneuver stepping out of our Airstream because there were some wet leaves on the step. I think there was one of those little cartoon banana peel <laughs> type sound effects and her feet just flew out underneath her and she dropped straight down. And my back basically landed on the door frame. So this is me stepping out of the trailer and my feet go out from under me and I land with the middle of my back on the edge of the door frame, the metal, hard, sharp door frame. And then I proceeded to bounce down the two steps. Sean thought I was dead or severely injured. I was standing um, outside our Airstream about, I don't know, five or six feet away. There was nothing I could do, but I witnessed this up close and I was completely horrified. I really thought she had broken her back or had suffered some serious injury. We just wanted to really take this opportunity to remind you of the importance of step safety. Next step, now it's time to 
fully hook up your hookups. You need to attach your water, uh, your power, and your sewer. We have a hard time for some reason <laughs> getting a decent water hose that does not leak. I mean, it's a problem. I don't know what the deal is. Somebody but... give us some hint. Is there some sort of attachment that we're supposed to have that we don't have on our water hose to keep it from dripping constantly and getting a knock on the door from the golf cart guy saying, oh, your water's leaking over there. Something else that some of you might be aware of is you may need a water pressure regulator. This is something that we actually carry around in our toolkit, but our Airstream has one built in to the water inlet. So in theory, we should never need it. But some campgrounds have really high water pressure and they will advise that you use a pressure regulator or else you could potentially damage the pipes of your RV as if you didn't have enough to worry about. And with regard to the power connection, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You're just gonna plug your 30 amp, if you use 30 amp power, up to the 30 amp power. However, we carry a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter. It's called a dog bone because it looks like a dog bone. A dog bone. <laughs> be a big dog, but it looks like a dog bone. And every once in a while, you're going to go to a campground and they will have 50 amp power, but they won't have 30 amp. And I suppose you 50 amp people sometimes go to campgrounds that only have 30 amp power. So what we carry, because we have a 30 amp rig, is a 50 to 30 amp adapter. And there have been a few times over the years when we have really needed that adapter mm -hmm. in order to get power. So it's one more thing that you can buy. Yeah. And we'll I put a link to one of those dog bones in the YouTube description of the video. I think we tend to encounter that more at like RV resorts that sort of cater more to the big motorhomes. They'll tend to have more sites with 50 amp power than 30 amp. So it's just something to keep in mind. And on the topic of the sewer hose, <laughs> There are a couple of things you might need. One is called a donut. I'm not talking about Krispy Kreme. It's a black piece of rubber shaped like a donut that you may need to put into the ground and you put your sewer hose down into that. Some campgrounds will require actually require it. it. Sometimes it's like a city ordinance that you have to have one of those. And it basically creates a tight connection for your sewer hose. So I understand why they want people to have it because nothing is worse than a sewer hose accident. Let me just tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think it also prevents gases from coming up yeah, out of the smells sewer. and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I can certainly understand the need for that. Mm -hmm. Another item you might want to carry with you is called sewer hose support. There are different companies that make these. Uh, one of them that's popular is called the Sidewinder. Let me show you what it looks like. So it's higher on one end and lower on the other. So this is the end. The high end is the end that goes next to your rig. So it sort of supports the hose right as it's coming off your rig. And then it gets shorter the closer you get to the connector in the ground. It makes it easier to empty the water out of your tanks because it sort of lowers your hose down to the sewer inlet at sort of an angle. <clears throat> And it also just looks so nice, neat, and attractive. So Makes you look like you got your stuff together, right? I was going to say another word, but I won't say that word. Where's my Purell? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Don't touch me. Um, okay, so number six, it's time to lower those stabilizer jacks. Some people call them scissor jacks. But yeah, so this is your chance to put down those jacks so that you won't be rocking and rolling every time you walk around inside your rig. Make sure that you've done all your leveling, that you're in exactly the spot you want to be in, that you know you don't need to lower anything or raise anything, because once you put these jacks down, there's no messing around with that power jack. Because if you try to do that when you've got your stabilizer jacks down, bad, bad things will happen. Yeah, you so. potentially tear up your power jack, like the gears inside it, mm -hmm. or you know, I guess you could possibly bend your scissor jacks. Mm -hmm. Either way, you just don't want to do, do that. Now, with regard to the scissor jacks, if you have manual scissor jacks, there's one little tool you must own. This thing costs like five bucks and it is a scissor jack adapter. Not this thing, this thing. <laughs> well, presumably you have a power drill. If you don't have a power drill, you can buy a cheap model for about 20 bucks. You could get a nice model for more than that. This is a pretty nice DeWalt power drill. You can use it to lower and raise your scissor jacks, and this will save you a lot of time and effort. So you won't be doing, You're only doing that manual <laughs> jack thing that uh, is a total pain. 
Uh, this takes care of it just in a matter of seconds. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I don't have the battery in my drill because I was going to give you a good drill sound effect, so you just have to use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could in theory use a, a socket, a drill socket that matches up to your scissor jacks, but this little adapter is better because it's all one solid metal piece and it won't slip. And so I do think it absolutely merits the five <laughs> bucks or whatever it is that they charge for it because you will use it every time you camp. And then your final steps of setting up the exterior of your rig are setting out your chairs. If it's nice weather and you're gonna be around your rig, put out your awning. Um, with regards to your awning, um, I don't know about other brands of awning, but I do know about Airstream awnings, specifically the Zip D awnings. You really only need to have those awnings extended when you are at your rig. Leaving those extended when you are leaving your rig is not a good idea because they are very fragile in that it doesn't take a lot of wind to really rustle those bad boys. And we've heard from more than one person that's had theirs ripped off. And when they rip off, they do really bad damage. And they're expensive to replace. And if they bend your aluminum elsewhere on the shell of your rig, that's really expensive to replace. So it's just not worth it. So if you're leaving your rig, I recommend putting away your awning. We do use the awning, but mm -hmm. typically we use it when we need it. If it's a really hot day and we're parked in the sunshine, the awning can make a big difference in the interior temperature of your trailer. However, yeah. if, if you leave the awning out and go somewhere out else in town and a windstorm crops up, which has happened to us once or twice, mm -hmm. you could be in big trouble because your awning can get torn off by the wind. A few years ago, it was a really calm day, beautiful, clear sky. So we're like, oh, it's not going to rain. It's not going to storm. We'll leave our awning out because we just put it out and it looks so nice and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we went into town for this little food festival and we're standing outside eating our food at the festival and here come some dark clouds mm -hmm. and then the wind starts. And so we hightail it back to our campsite. And I mean, by the time we got there, the wind was just whipping and it was like after that, never again will we leave our awning out because it can just change in the, you know, span of a minute. <laughs> yeah, it really can. Hello there. So. Cheers. Cheers. The final step, step number eight. It's time for a beer. It's yep, time to relax. Yeah, adult beverage of choice. Yeah. Whether it be beer, wine, liquor. Orange juice. Orange juice. Kool-Aid, whatever. Yep, maybe whatever a, a green smoothie. Yep, that's right. You, My mom would have unsweet iced tea. That's right. Whatever it is you enjoy, it's time to relax. When you first get involved with RV camping, you're going to be taken aback at all of this work. I mean, honestly, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that has to be done when you're setting up and breaking down a campsite. It doesn't feel like much of a vacation when you first start it's doing it. It's very active. We'll put yeah. it that way. Like when you arrive at the campsite, there's a lot of things to be done. And when you first start out, you're going to make some mistakes. And you're just, you know, you're getting used to the routine. So it's going to take you longer. The first time you go out, don't get discouraged by how long it takes you to do everything because you'll get faster as time goes on. It will become more second nature. Each person will sort of learn their job, you know, like he has certain jobs that he always does. I have certain jobs I always do. And that sort of speeds up the process as well. That's right. I mean, when we first started out, I think it would take us, I don't know, 45 minutes to set up our campsite. And now it feels like we can do it in probably five to 10 minutes, something yeah. like that. Depends somewhat on the campsite. Like I said, there is absolutely no consistency from one <laughs> campground to the next. And so you never really know what you're going to get at a campsite until you pull into it and see what's there. But we've gotten down where we can do this pretty quickly. <laughs> and you will too. It just takes some experience and practice. Right. So that's it, guys. We hope uh, this video has been helpful to you, especially you newbies out there to RV camping. You seasoned old veterans, now's the time for you to chime in in the comments and share your wisdom with our community. Let us know what kind of steps you take when you arrive at a campsite. What do you look out for? Is there anything that we missed in this video? Well, it's your job <laughs> to fill in the blanks in the comments section. Yeah, everybody does things a little differently. And in fact, you'll see wide variety with campsites. You know, there are some people that pull in, they don't unhitch, they stay connected, they don't put anything out. 
There's people like us where we'll set out some chairs. Then there are people that like full on decorate. They have like potted plants, they have lights hung up, they have pretty little tablecloths. So outdoor you know, rugs. And yeah, so there, there's a lot of variety with, uh, you know, probably the length of time it takes to set up your site, depending on what all you want. Well, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. If you're new to our YouTube channel, please click that subscribe button. When you subscribe, you will never miss a video. If you really want to make sure you get every video, click the little bell icon that is next to the word subscribe. And that way you will get a notification every time a new video is uploaded. And then if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. Give us a shout out. Say hi. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And maybe tell us what you want to see in the next video. All right, guys. Thanks Until again. next time. Lo -lo -ho. Lo -lo -ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Show a little chest there. <laughs> you need to show the ladies what you got. Bow chicka wow wow. Oh, you got your ladies. <laughs>